All right. Hey, world, this is your girl, Marky Lemons Rao, real estate keynote speaker and Facebook Live host. And I am always excited to bring you tidbits that are going to help you with social selling. Today, uh, I've been following this gentleman for quite some time all across the internet. And he has been an icon. Actually, what I love about him is the fact that he's willing to try something new. And because we're going to talk about vertical video, I don't think it's anyone better to have here today than Dustin. How are you doing today? Doing great, Marky. Doing great. We're, we're both just kind of recovering from our, our time at Inman, aren't we? Yes, we are trying to recover from yep. New York last <laughs> week. And I guess what's funny is that I couldn't even come home because of polar vortex. And so I was out, I was stranded, not stranded, but I was out here in the streets for seven days just because nothing was flying into the Chicago land area. Oh, man. But you spent a week right in New York. Six days. Six yeah. days. And what's your number yeah. one takeaway from Inman? Uh, so I, I went personally, um, to, to network and, and do some meetings and stuff like that. Cause I spoke on Tuesday and, and so for me, it wasn't really to go to the sessions and, and learn new stuff. It, I was really there to, to network and meet new people. But, um, what I took away from it, to be honest with you, is that it's, our industry is so much further behind than I thought when it comes to technology and marketing. It really is. Isn't it? And here's the thing, you're consistently learning, right? And so you yes. want to come back and you want to educate and train people on all this new great stuff. And then you realize, but I really need to dial it back four to five years because they haven't implemented what I've already told them. How do I give them more? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard people discussing like amongst themselves whether or not a Facebook page is worth taking the time to do. Like this was a conversation I heard out in the hall and it, like I had to, I had to turn around. I was like, Oh, I don't well, know you know what? what? I didn't formally introduce you. So I want you to formally introduce yourself because I need people to understand that uh, you, how cutting edge you are and some of the things that you're currently doing in the world of real estate. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I've been an agent for, uh, excuse me, for about eight years in Salt Lake city and, and a year ago, I launched the Massive Agent Podcast, which is a real estate marketing and lead generation podcast for agents and loan officers, because I, I realized three or four years ago that um, through my own efforts of trying to do you know, content marketing and build my own brand and um, you know, have effective marketing that actually brings in new people, I learned how to do it the right way. And so I, I started sharing that with other agents and, and that you know, we built up a little group called the, the Snap Pack uh, Real Estate Marketing Group on Facebook. I believe you're a member of that. I am. Yep. And, and so I, there's this hunger within our industry for like the latest and greatest on marketing. And, and even, even if it's not the latest and greatest, just like dumbing it down, which I'm very good at because I'm not the smartest guy, but I can dumb it down so that, you know, the average person can understand it. And it, it, there's so many tools and it's so easy to get distracted. And I think, um, I think it's important to have voices out there that, that kind of distill it down and present people different options in a way where they don't feel like they have to do it all. They just have to pick something that's in line with their strengths, their weaknesses, their, what they like doing. And, you know, they just need to pick that and do it. Um, you know, so I started the podcast a year ago and it, it's really been it, it's really grown. Um, I'm really enjoying all the people that I can interact with and, and um, for lack of a better term, touch, you know, through, through podcasting and through my flash briefings. And yeah, there, there's this, um, some of our industry is really up to date on, on stuff, but most of them aren't. And the Inman Connect conference really was shining a, a, a bright spotlight on the part of the industry that just is way behind. Like, I, Marky, there was this one, this one time where, Let's see, Robert Refkin, the CEO of Compass, I saw yep. him get asked by somebody, is technology something that we should really be focusing on as a solo agent? And, and he just, he's like, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what's kind of what funny? I, I remember, uh, and I, I let people know, I, I have an MBA degree from 1996. So needless to say, none of this they taught in that their MBA program. 
And exactly. it was 2006. I was at home on maternity leave with my youngest son. And the 2006 profile of buyers and sellers came out from the National Association of Realtors. It told us that in 1995, 2% of buyers and sellers were utilizing the internet as part of the real estate transaction. Well, the reason I started using technology because in 2006, when I read that same identical study, that number had gone to 80%. And I knew then that we were just scratching at the surface. If we look at last year, 95%. And so technology is a part of every real estate transaction, whether we're talking about transaction management, you talk about Matterport, you and it, it, every element of real estate has a technology component. I guess they couldn't even wrap their head around blockchain, right? <laughs> that would just take right. it all the way to a whole nother level. But I yeah. know we we often talk about niches, right? And, and, and I see that agents who own a niche actually earn more money with fewer headaches. When we start thinking about platforms, and I'm thinking about what Mark Zuckerberg stated, he stated that 2019 is going to be the year of messenger and of stories. I know that you happen to like a little bit of Instagram. So I'm thinking that we could talk about Instagram and how to leverage it for lead generation. What are some of the things that you're seeing and doing over there? Because today there'll be 1 billion interactions with stories, whether they're a Facebook story or a Instagram story. So, so what has been uh, some of your successes or what are you seeing over on Instagram? For sure. Uh, Instagram is something that I didn't, I'd say I'm fairly new to the party on Instagram. Like I've, I've had an account for years, a personal one, but I just, I didn't quite get it. I, I really get Facebook and I really got Snapchat and really liked those. And it, it wasn't until I really started to mess around with Instagram that I realized how powerful that can be. But the, the biggest mistake I see people making on Instagram is they're selling. They're constantly selling, selling, selling. Hey, look at me. I'm an agent in Salt Lake City. Hey, here's why I'm the best agent. You know, blah, blah, blah. Agent, agent, open house, listing. That's it. What they don't realize is people don't care about that crap. They don't, unless they're actively looking. Like they, they don't care about your open house next weekend. They just don't. Unless that house has like a fire, like a fireplace in the shower. You know, like that's interesting. Show that. <laughs> I actually saw one of those the other day. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. That, that is very interesting. You know, what yeah. I tell agents uh, all the time is because they definitely, I think that you should share your listing because you have a marketing agreement to do so, right? However, listing is it. the least amount of engagement of anything a person will ever post because of the almighty three disqualifiers. It isn't the community. It isn't the price point. It isn't the bedroom, bathroom count that people in your sphere of influence desire. And I don't know why they don't get that because it's always, look at my listing, look at my listing, look at my listing, but that isn't what consumers want. So what has worked for you in regards to content? Sure. So, so I do... I do Instagram two different ways because I have the massive agent podcast. And so I'm, I'm doing some branding and, you know, marketing tips and stuff for agents and loan officers that is not for the consumer. So I'll speak to what is relevant for the agent or LO who, who is trying to get more business from the consumer. Um, it, yes. You have to let people know that you're a real estate agent and that you're a good one and that you know what you're doing. And yes, you should be promoting your listings. The, the question or, or what matters though is, how you promote it. People are just too lazy where they take the, the, and it's the same with like, look at all the first photos on the MLS. It's the front of the house. Why is it always the front of the house? Is it the most interesting attention getting photo? Usually it's not. So why, if you understand that you have to get somebody's attention first, and then you can show them what you want to show them, pick the photo or the aspect of the listing that is the most attention getting, that is the most interesting. It, it could be the view. Like it, maybe it's not even the house. Maybe it's the view from the back patio of the mountains when the sun is rising, you know, like that. Um, so you have to take a step back, not do what everyone else does and just post a picture of the front of the damn house, unless it is amazing, unless it belongs on Pinterest, you know, like, I don't get that many listings that are that amazing, you know, from the front of the house, let's be honest. And oh. most people don't either. So take a step back, think of what about this listing is unique? 
what is really awesome, what are those aspects that people, if they saw it, would get excited about? Hmm. And then figure out how to highlight that on Instagram, in your stories specifically, and everywhere else. It, you know, just because you have a listing doesn't mean that you have to post the front of the house as your Instagram post. Wow. You know what? And, and here's the thing. You have all the photos already and yeah. no one, and, and I've been at this for 20 years. No one has ever dropped that nugget. And that is an absolute nugget. Pick the best freaking photo or better yet. When you have that photographer out there, look for the interesting element to showcase. Now that yeah. makes sense. Wow. 100%. Yeah. That, that, that freaking great tip. Okay. What else? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then, then it's about um, showing off the community and I'm removing, you know, we've moved past just promoting that one particular listing in that one post. Okay. Uh, overall, your strategy needs to be one of letting people know that you are the local expert in the area. And, and that means that you're knowledgeable about the area, that you um, highlight the different cool, actually interesting things in the area, like what new bars just or have moved in? What new restaurants? Um, you know, is there a new attraction? Like, is did Top Golf just open? Or are they about to? Or Dave and Buster's? Or like, is there a new mall or a new store? That's the stuff that people care about. That will keep them coming back to your page or back to your profile again and again. Not the 10, 10 tips for a, a first-time home buyer. Not to say you shouldn't ever do that, but like, rarely ever do that. You know, ten percent of the time. Focus on the community. And just by saying, hey, it's Dustin with Cert Salt Lake, and then you go into your go into talking about a new restaurant, they now know I'm an agent. You don't have to remind them throughout the whole thing that you are, and they're going to see it on your profile. So deliver a bunch of value about the community to, to make sure that they understand you're the go-to person in your community. And while doing that, do it authentically. Just be yourself. If you're rough around the edges like me, like just, just throw it out there and be yourself because you're going to attract the right people. You're not going to attract everybody. You don't want to attract everybody. Because when you attract everyone, you attract people that you will never get along with, and then you'll have those nightmare scenarios. But you'll, you'll attract the right people who know, like, and trust you. And the only way to do that is to be yourself, be authentic, and, and stop talking about real estate all the time. Show your personal life. Like, you know, if you're going to your kid's football game, and, you know, he scores a touchdown and then he like does a backflip, you know, and that, that's kind of funny. Like show that, you know, my kid can't do a backflip, but I'm sure someone, someone, you know, neither can. can mine, neither right. can mine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what right. I've noticed um, and I categorize my content into two categories. One, there are business related posts, but then there are those uh, per personal elements. And if I looked at my top performing uh, videos, period. They always are personal, never business related. Now, do I get a lot of leads on business related posts? Yes, I do. But when we're talking about the likes, the shares, the comments, it's always going to be on something personal, non-business related, because people definitely want to get to know you. And my favorite little quote is a Marky Lemons. It's a, it's a, it's a Marky ism. And that is the fact that I am the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair. Yet I create <laughs> video content. Yeah. I create <laughs> video content every single day because people don't care about how I look. They care if I can solve their problems, but they like that authentic person. Um, even the fact like today, I don't have on makeup. I realize that I get substantially more engagement when I don't necessarily look my absolute best because people want to know if I can help them solve their problems. Uh, and it's amazing how people will connect with you if one, they can learn to trust you, but more importantly, they know that you're there to help them to basically contribute and deposit to their lives. Uh, and so, I'm all down for the type of content. So what has been your most engaging content on fate on uh, Instagram? Usually it's like the, the humorous stuff, just like the, the weird, random, goofy stuff. Like, so um, a while ago, this was like my best performing post on all platforms. Um, but I, I was on Snapchat at the time and I, I uh, just took a photo of a construction barrel 
that I was driving by, like I was at a red light, there's an orange construction barrel. I took a photo and I put text over the top that said the Utah state tree, because it's a, it's a joke here in Utah that, you know, there's, there's two seasons, winter and road construction. Okay. And it's probably the same way in your area too. So <laughs> yeah. And so I, I just, the Utah state tree. And then I took that and I posted it on Facebook and it started getting thousands of shares. Like it went crazy on my business page and I put it on an Instagram story and I started getting so many comments and, and it reactions from that. And it, it's, it's because it's like, people don't have to think too hard about it. Like it's just you being yourself, you showing that you have a personality that you might be fun to work with. Like all of these things happen in a split second uh, subconsciously when somebody sees it. But notice I said thousands of shares. If I took a photo of a, the front of a house and said, I'm having an open house from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday, come check it out. Would that have had any shares except for maybe by the seller? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, no, you weren't going to get thousands of shares off no. of one photo, not of a front of a house, unless maybe you had Rock, uh, the Rock standing there uh, doing a backflip, maybe then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so, and I think another thing that um, you just said in that is sometimes, every single day, think or, or look around you to see what's unique or different and capture that moment. And it's no reason to not capture it because we don't leave home without our mobile devices. 100%. I mean, it's, it's, let's be honest, it's always in our hand or in our pocket. Like it's always with us 100% of the time. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. So, so use that, you know, you can, you can take a photo, put it up on any platform you want, put it on your Instagram story super quick. And I, I think the issue is, and, and I, st I do this too. I like, I'm not perfect, but we overthink the type of content we should be putting out there. Every like day. Really, really overthink it a lot. <laughs> Every day and we think of, yes, yeah, overthink it all the time. Absolutely. And what I think when it comes from a video aspect where I've had the most success is when I just pull the car over and I will write down five bullet points because I know what those points are and then I just go live. So scripted does not work. People no. want to see the authentic unscripted version of you. Yep. And when I do my podcast, I don't have a script. I have, like you said, a couple bullet points of topics that I want to make sure that I get in there. But then you just roll with it. Like you're just, you know, that's how the authenticity comes out. That's the authenticity of your content anywhere, not just Instagram, but that is how people make the connection with you. If, if it's all scripted all the time, they can't relate to that. You know, like you said, when, when you don't have makeup on or you're just like, you know, you're casual, that's when you get the most engaging stuff. It's because it's relatable. Like people... But if you're all done up in a suit and like if I had a suit on and lapel pins and my freaking name tag, you know, um, people can't relate to that. No, they can't. And, and no. let me tell you this, nine times out of 10, they aren't coming to a showing appointment in a suit either, uh, unless they just got off of work. But I could probably count on two hands the amount of people who came suited and booted uh, to go yeah. look at a, a property, especially and if they're an investor. Absolutely not. So have right. you received a lot of success in uh, creating Instagram stories? Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, it was... I think it's, it's due to me practicing for a year or two on Snapchat because I was really all about Snapchat for a long time. And I just, I used the stories as a, a storytelling platform. Like I could, I could speak, I could, you know, tell a story of something that happened that day. I could, um, you know, just be myself. And so since I had practiced that, then I brought it over to Instagram and how nice was it that Instagram literally copied everything from Snapchat. And so it's the exact same thing, but better in my opinion. It is. And yeah. And so I could just do the same things the same way on Instagram stories now. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I get a lot of feedback. I get a lot of um, engagement and, and everything for my stories, but um, it, you know, similar to, to your experience, it's the, it's the throwaway little things of like, you know, my son being a goofball or my daughter, like, you know, what, it could be anything random that usually gets the most engagement versus the stuff that like I'm planning on doing, or like, I want to make sure I get this message out. It just seems like people resonate the most with you and your authentic self in your real life. 
that is the power of it. And that's why, like you said at the beginning, there's going to be a billion people watching stories today. When you factor in WhatsApp, it's one and a quarter billion people. And that's just from the Facebook companies. So let's think about this. So Facebook owns Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger. And I think one of the reasons that uh, some of us who were using Snapchat uh, like Instagram a little more is the, um, the fact that basically you can go from one app to the other app seamless. So I could do a, a story and I can share it instantly over to my Facebook business page, but then I can also download it and potentially go share it among groups or via messenger because of how Instagram works directly with Facebook. So when you think about Facebook's internet control, especially when it comes to, to social platforms, Instagram is where we're creating that on the go, especially stories right now in your face. This is what's happening. But now we can take that content and repurpose it, whether we're sending it as direct messages or pushing it contingent upon how we have our Instagram, whether it's a personal or business page over to our personal or business page on Facebook. And so when you think about are you saving um, your once you've done a story? right? Are you interacting in other, any kind of way with that story content? Yeah, uh, that just, it depends on what that story was about. Sure. Like if it's something that I notice is getting a lot of engagement, then I, I'm like, oh, maybe I should save this real quick and then I'll, you know, post it somewhere else. Um, I got you. Yeah. It just depends on what it is. Or like if it's a message that I really want to make sure gets out there or like an announcement or something. Yeah. I'll save it. I'll put it up on the other platforms as well. Um, yet Snapchat never had any real discoverability um, except for like finding an article or a directory of Snap users outside of Snapchat. Like there's no way of other people finding you with the Facebook companies. It's, they make it very easy to find new people and for new people to find you through hashtags, through your, you know, your geotag, through um, just like searching, you know, the search bar itself. And, and so that's why I think it's, it's been such a great place for, for so many people to build a personal brand and a personal business. I mean, it's, there's nothing better. There really isn't. When we think about, um, are there any, what are your favorite third party apps and tools to use in conjunction with Instagram? Um, they're usually like photo editing apps. Okay. Um, I do like cut story okay. because if you, if you have like a, a one minute video and you want to upload it to Instagram, it, cut story cuts it into 15 second pieces. And then you can upload that. Um, okay. Because you know, the 15 second limit, unless you're, this just happened what a couple months ago, but now you can record and it'll let you go longer than 15 seconds. That's fairly new to Instagram. Um, I love that because now it's more like you can tell a little bit longer story. Uh, cut story is good. I like over O V E R for editing um, images and video. So you can make stories, you can make, um, you know, you can add logos, you can add other images on top, you can add gifts, you can add a bunch of stuff, but um, let's see what else for Instagram. It's a very good question, Marky. <laughs> so let me tell you what I've been using a lot of. I've been using a yes. lot of InShot uh, because nice. I can take square and horizontal and turn it into vertical content. But I also like, and I think I might have seen this on your page, I'm not sure what you call it, where I can put that horizontal video inside of the vertical frame mm -hmm. and then I can have scrolling words across the top and the bottom. You see Gary V does it quite a bit with his video content. So InShot allows me to do that. And yes. for lead generation, because I'm always adding that call to action to each post and then doing the emojis pointing up to, uh, for link in bio, I've been utilizing Linktree. What, when yes. people click on your link in your bio, where does it take them? Uh, there's like 10 different places. So my, my, um, I'll speak to my, my massive agent Instagram profile. So my, my podcast website that had, I mean, that's home base. It has, every episode, the show notes, you know, a player, all that, um, a link to my home search website, my realtor website, um, a link to get information about eXp Realty, my brokerage, 
a link to my Facebook ads training program called the Massive Agent Society, um, a link to some of my other profiles. You know, like I think I have my, my Facebook, maybe um, LinkedIn, and also um, links to listen to the podcast on iTunes, on Spotify, on a couple other places. On my personal Instagram, um, or rather my, my uh, Search Salt Lake one, because that, that's the local one that I use for real estate, um, link to the website, link to other social profiles. Uh, Linktree is so awesome because it, Instagram only gives you that one link, and now you can click that. It opens it up very mobile friendly within Instagram, and you, have, you can send them all these other places. So cross-promote your other social platforms. Put your Twitter on there, your LinkedIn, everything else, your real estate website. If you have a YouTube channel, if there's one specific video that you did on YouTube that you want everyone to see, link just to that video and say, you, you know, must watch. And curiosity is going to get people to click it. So you can uh, definitely use Linktree. Um, I wouldn't have thought of that as an app because like it's not literally an app on my phone, but Marky, that's probably the most powerful thing you could use for Instagram. Yeah, I love Linktree, and especially when I, and I decided to uh, get the premium version, even though I often preach the freemium version, yeah. because I know that every single day I am adding a contact to my MailChimp um, because I bought the premium uh, version, so it's dropping uh, at the very top. It'll say connect with, and it lets you connect with these other two. So MailChimp, I'm getting a lead every day, but then I'm looking at how many people not only click on the link tree link, but they're also clicking on all those other websites. And I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. And some of those are landing pages or Eventbrite registration. And so that's how I've turned my LinkedIn account into lead generation. And I know that there are some other tools that people use, like I think it's Link Bio, but I think that might be more for fashion uh, than uh, where you can see the mirror image of the post and they can click on it from there so there are definitely some tools but the only one down the, the downfall I guess or downside of using Instagram is the fact that it only has that one link until you get to what 10,000 followers and then you could do stories and do the swipe up that you exactly. know other than that you kind of stuck right right inside of uh, Instagram are you doing any ads on Instagram yes Yep. So I, I love, love, love Facebook ads and Instagram ads are, um, they're like a, a kissing cousin, so to speak. Oh, that's a terrible analogy, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> it, it, because Instagram has a different culture, a different language, a different, um, you know, Instagram is not Facebook and Facebook is an Instagram. So you have to, uh, your message has to be different on each. Um, but I love the Instagram story placement for an ad where they can swipe up and, and watch a video or whatever else. Those work really well. Just remember when they're going through, it, you have to know how the stories work. So one story just ended, then yours pops up. They could really quickly tap to, you know, to forward past it. So it has to be attention getting from the very first split second. Somehow that could be visually, it could, you know, you just have to get their attention somehow instantly. Otherwise they're just going to blow past it. Don't introduce yourself because you've, then you've wasted two seconds and they've already skipped past jump right into it. And if you can do that with a video or maybe it's a static image, maybe it's just something like kind of abstract and crazy looking that gets attention, experiment with it. But Instagram swipe up ads do work really well. And then they can click out to wherever you want them to go. You know what? You just taught me something and it makes sense. Once I heard you say it, do not introduce yourself in your stories because, you, yeah, th that would take too much time. Two that seconds makes, is way too much time. Yeah, that, that yep. makes all the sense in the world. Now, uh, let me see. I had a question and I, I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe I shouldn't ask this question, but I don't. Now the question has, has I've lost the question, so I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> we'll um, circle and, back eventually. We'll circle back. It's, yeah, it's no problem. Uh, no problem. And so one, a uh, couple of things that you said had just stood out that identifying that absolute best photo and here now I'm thinking Marky stop introducing yourself do not introduce yourself not one more freaking time so we've talked about the links we've talked about the ads are you using the highlights oh no no that wasn't the question It's come to me now 
how do you feel about IGTV? I like IGTV <laughs> for me is just kind of like, eh. Um, I've used it. I, I have a few videos up there, but like literally just a few. Um, I mean, it's, it, look, I'm sure that if you really devote some time and effort to it, it could be a really good, um, really good place. But most people aren't doing vertical video for long form video. The, that was the whole thing is they were supposed to um, make it up to 60 minutes. Like all of a sudden now Instagram video could be 60 minutes. Well, if they just did that within the feed, then like YouTube would have had a huge chunk taken away from it because then they could have done Instagram and YouTube style video in the feed, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. They're like, let's create this whole extra thing. Let's limit it to vertical video and, and make it a separate app. And like, I don't want another app. I have too many apps. I don't need another Instagram app. And, and so I just don't see much attention there. I, I've heard a few people recently say that they really enjoy it. Um, it, it's like anything, it's kind of created another, another niche within Instagram. It's just not one that I want to div divert attention from what I'm currently doing into doing. Um, I don't want to do vertical, I don't want to be locked into doing vertical video. Um, if I, like, if I want to do a 20 minute video on something, I don't want to have to do it vertical, you know? You want to do it horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, that makes sense. The one thing nice about it though, Marky, is even if you don't have 10,000 Instagram followers, if you have an IGTV video, you can link to that in your stories without yeah. having 10,000 followers. So you can link to an IGTV video. That's cool. Um, you know, it just has to be the right video. Well, one thing that you just stated that I could see being beneficial is if we were able to have that vertical channel feed inside of the regular feed. And basically when we load, we get the option to decide what the format, uh, uh, what yeah, the format of that video is gonna be, whether it's going to be a horizontal video, a square video or a vertical video. It might throw off the sizing of the feed just a little. No, they would just make it still fit inside that same parameter um, yeah. because then that content would be seen more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that, and that's, um, a, that's a good fix because every report that I've read so far is stating that IGTV is not growing at the rate in which Instagram, of course, would like for it to grow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have um, someone that I know personally kind of told me about IGTV before it launched because they work uh, at Instagram. They did, like, I didn't know details. I just knew it had to do with video and and that videos were you're about to do longer videos we were about to be able to do longer videos on instagram so i thought naturally that that they were just going to remove the 60 second cap on instagram videos had they just done that then you could have like you'd have all these youtubers that could then just start doing it within instagram and like the whole platform would have just exploded um they didn't for whatever reason and i i know that they were betting the farm on it um just because of someone who works internally they were betting the farm like and it, it, it's landed with a big thud so far yeah but here's the beautiful thing they can always change that right so we could wake <laughs> up tomorrow and they will have implemented yet another change yeah uh, and so, then everything changes like they could literally just say okay it's now not you know yeah. now you can do 60 minute videos within the feed that's the only change and like youtube's gonna have a big piece of attention taken away from it yeah, it's it's amazing how you can wake up overnight and you have to rethink your entire strategy because they've updated or made changes to one of the platforms. Yeah, exactly. A uh, couple of things that stand out uh, today for me, Justin. One is to find the most engaging content, but because we have our phones in our hands, we need to capture that. It's never the, oh, I wish, I, you know, the shoulda, woulda, coulda. That does not exist. Capture it in that moment, make sure that you have your phone handy. And when you're out taking uh, photos and videos of your new listings or the community that you serve, capture something that is engaging, do something different with that property or your community that you aren't seeing others do. Um, the next thing is to be, you talked about local expert quite a bit, but that you should also interact with stories and you want that to also be the most engaging content and do not introduce yourself uh which is something uh, i never thought about because i'm forever freaking introducing myself 
You if, do that in stories too? Yeah, I've done it. I don't do it all the time, but I've done it. But based on today's conversation, <laughs> you don't ever have to worry. I will not be introducing myself <laughs> again because it makes all the good sense in the world, Dustin. I'm like, Marky, what were you thinking about? So yeah. I, want, uh, I want everybody here today to be able to connect with you. Uh, if you could tell them where they can find more out and how can they connect with you online? Thank you, Marky. I appreciate that. Uh, massiveagentpodcast.com is, is kind of my home base for everything. And then you could follow me on Instagram, Facebook at Massive Agent. And I'm on LinkedIn as well, um, just under my name, Dustin Brome. And then, um, yeah, my, my local real estate company here in Salt Lake is, is Search Salt Lake. So I'm on all the social networks under Search Salt Lake as well. Um, so I'd love to you know, send me a message. Let me know that you, that you saw me here on this podcast and, and that'd be cool. I'd love to meet you. And one thing I love about the power of real estate is the ability to give referrals. And as yeah. I am traveling, I'm consistently telling people you want to research the person so they can research you. They'll know your personality. They know that you care about the community. So anybody looking for a Salt Lake person to refer to, this would be the man to refer those transactions <laughs> to. Right. And so guys, I really appreciate your time today. I am your girl, Marky Lemons. You can find me by simply looking for Marky Lemons or Social Selling Made Simple across the internet. We appreciate your time and energy and hope that we've made social selling just a little bit easier for you today. Thank you.